Hi, Sean. Thanks for joining me, friend. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, been looking forward to this for a while. Um, yeah, I'd love to start by asking you the question that I ask everyone, which is about your life story. And, um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes I think of this show almost as like a kind of church for me where I get to worship. And it's like I'm not worshiping some god or some symbol, but I just think people are so magnificent and so uh, unique. Like every person is just a world unto themselves and this whole person with this story and background and different qualities and strengths and challenges and just that that the differences in people and the the stories they've been through like the things in their life are just so always so amazing to me and i just love witnessing that and seeing people in the exact circumstances that they're in and just being like where where are you and what's happened to you and what are you going through and feel like um, these conversations are a way I can really honor that about people and understand them and see them and witness them where they are. And uh, it feels like a privilege to have these conversations and yeah, sort of starting out by asking people about their life story and what's what's happened to them so far gives me a chance to kind of start having that kind of conversation. So yeah, would love to ask you what's happened to you in your life and uh, so far and how you think about it and how you feel about it. Anything that you want to say, would love to hear about it. Okay. Um, cool. So I guess I was born in um, Saskatchewan, Saskatoon in Canada. And then my dad uh, got a job as a chemistry professor in Southern Ontario, Queens University, when I was two weeks old, I guess. So we moved there and basically I grew up there my whole life. Um, it's only been, yeah, like in, in April, really, like I'd moved out of home within my city before then, but this is my first time um, leaving home, basically. Um, and yeah, I went to school, went to like a, just a normal, like English school that anybody would go to, um, like a Catholic school, I guess my parents are Catholic, um, until grade five um when i switched to a french immersion school because my brother had gone there two years before and i thought like that would be cool or you know just following my older brother or something um and when i got there i very quickly realized like oh i have no friends here and i don't really like learning french <laughs> like everything about this kind of sucks um but uh, my parents kind of made me stick with my decision and stay there. Um, and probably around that time, even a bit earlier, and because of school and probably some other things, like I had gone from a very like outgoing, happy, friendly kind of kid to very just withdrawn, I guess, anxious, depressed. Um, and I would kind of stay on that path for a very long time, years and years. Like, so that's probably like I'm 10 years old then. It's probably only like in my mid 20s, like early mid 20s, that like I kind of, oh, like I sort of broke out of, of like the kind of weird depressive place that I kind of fallen into all the those years ago um I mean I played a lot of sports growing up um I used to love school and then yeah around that time 10 years old grade five like I really uh just stopped caring about school I guess um and just devoted all of my my energy to learning things on my own like YouTube was kind of coming up around then I think it came out in like 2007 or something um so I was kind of in there like really early on just obsessed with with like videos and was learning how to do magic tricks how to solve a Rubik's Cube um how to like shoot free kicks I played competitive soccer um just, you know, how to do my homework because I wasn't paying attention in class. Um, 
And that's something that I still do today. I mean, I love just learning stuff on my own, figuring out how stuff works. Um, and usually it's like quirky kind of skills. Um, so like juggling, doing a handstand. Like I want to learn how to do a backflip. Currently I'm learning how to skateboard. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. So I guess just kind of went through school, uh, graduated elementary school, went to high school, um, played like football and rugby there. And that kind of made me like a popular kid at school, though, I think just having just being like an insecure person, not having the best mental health, like I didn't necessarily feel cool, um, even though you know, I had like day two of school, you know, I got like 60 friends because I went to football <laughs> try it. It's like kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I went through high school, um, producing music, like making indie games, um, playing sports, doing a little bit of partying, not too much though, really. Um, spent a lot of my life yeah, just being a kind of withdrawn person. I do my extracurriculars that kind of my parents were uh, not forcing me to do per se, but kind of forcing me to do. Um, and then I'll just get back home to my room and, and do practice, study, like whatever um, whatever I was obsessed with at the time. Um, then, yeah, I went, to, I went to Queens University where my dad was teaching in the city I grew up in. Um, didn't really put too much thought into it. Didn't really know why I was there. Kind of just felt like I was supposed to go to university, I guess. Um, and that's when I like really got depressed, got addicted to dipping tobacco, smoking weed, um, skipped most of my classes, played a lot of video games. Um, it was very lost in life at that point. Um, and that's when my parents also kind of stopped encouraging me to play sports or to go out or to do any anything and I think like once my life was sort of all up to me at that point like 18 um yeah I really struggled to to make anything of it I guess but at the same time when I was 18 um I also made some indie games for the first time I completed them and pitched them to like armor games and mini clip addicting games um, and I made like three games and, um, ended up making like 8,000 us dollars off of them. So I don't know. Yeah. My whole life has kind of been this like dichotomy of like doing great and thriving and like following my passions and like succeeding at that, but also feeling very like depressed and, and withdrawn and like lost and confused and like struggling at the same time um but eventually yeah graduated um university um and then kind of did like a manual labor job for a bit and kind of like didn't know what I was doing with my life still you know I still didn't really have a plan or any idea and some part of me kind of just thought like oh I'll get a job after university because of this degree but you know then you graduate and there's there's no job like I just got a piece of paper that said I graduated um and so then at the labor job I realized like I could do this I guess like there is dignity in like working and providing for myself or potentially providing for others but you know there's nothing interesting happening here for me. And that's ultimately what I realized is like, I don't need a dream job per se. I just need a job that is sort of creative and technical enough. Like it could kind of look like many different things, but I just need a certain like threshold of stimulation um, at my, my place of work. And then after that, I decided I was going to be a web developer it's full stack or front-end web developer um and i just started studying for that on my own um doing udemy courses youtube stuff um 
doing technical interviewing, learning how to do leak code, how to do like a behavioral interview, um, and just building projects with JavaScript and React. And kind of uh, like a year later, basically, um, getting my first tech job. And then I guess like two years into that, um, finally, it's, it was a, a remote job the whole way. Um, so two years into that, um, kind of moved into Fractal uh, here in, in Brooklyn, in New York City. Um, sorry, can you hear that? Nope. No? Okay, perfect. Just AC from the other room is super mm. loud. Um, and yeah, that's where I am now. Um, kind of fell in love with this girl recently as well. Um, and now I'm planning on moving to the UK in the fall uh, to be with her there. Mm. So yeah, life is moving fast all of a mm. sudden, very fast. Mm. Uh, thanks for sharing all that, friend. Uh, I'm curious, what was the depression like for you at kind of its peak or some of the most challenging moments? Like, what was what was that like for you? Um, I think, like, the first thing that comes to mind, people always talk about, like, male depression in terms of, like, learned helplessness. And I think that that's probably true for me as well. Like, I didn't know why I was at university, and yet this was supposed to be my decision. This was supposed to be me, like, you know, finally making more of my own decisions. Um, and so there is, I think, a lot of cognitive dissonance there. Um, also, just, like, really struggling with all the small details. Um and just like, because I slacked off for so long in school and just didn't care about it. Um, definitely did not have good habits. Um, and so kind of just like my whole life fell apart. Um, I really, you know, I stopped playing sports as well because no one was kind of making me do that or I just kind of didn't feel like it anymore. But sports were basically my only outlet for athleticism and socializing. I didn't really do much outside of that um, growing up. So when I got rid of those, um, there's very little reason to leave my room. Um, and because I felt like such a, like an autodidact or something, and I hated school, like just some part of me like oh I don't need to go to class I can just learn stuff on my own which uh definitely was not true <laughs> um, and so then I'm kind of like falling behind in all my classes just feeling like shit feeling like I don't know what I'm doing with my life or like why I'm here just feeling totally inadequate um very lonely um just like super lacking energy um but i think also kind of feeling resigned to it um in a way like that just my life was going to suck forever and like like oh well i guess that's just how my life is like I'll just live like this until I die and then just yeah kind of resigning myself to it and yeah so I think it, it is a lot of like just feeling like I didn't have control over my life and like I didn't know what I was doing with my life or what I wanted or how to get there um, and just feeling like stuck but also like not really knowing that I was stuck in a way or like not knowing why. Uh, yeah. Uh, what helped you to move through your depression? Um, I think there were, I definitely 
one of the turning points for me was seeing a bunch of Jordan Peterson <laughs> lectures. Um, just some good lectures on like, just on depression. Um, I remember, you know, one of the, he had some video that kind of concluded with him saying like, you know, um, antidepressants work for some people. So you shouldn't write them off, right? Like you should at least give them a shot. Um, and that was one of the first like moments where I was like, ah, yeah, I am like, actually I am resistant to trying to fix myself or change myself or like get out of this in any way. Um, and another like really resonant thing was just talking about, um, you know, what if you sort of always told the truth all the time? And he was sort of telling a story about how, you know, he was at a party noticing that he was like saying things that like were like misaligned from himself. And like he felt like he was kind of splitting himself in half when he was speaking and sort of posed himself the question like, well, what if I never did that? What if I always spoke things that felt like they were in, in a line with myself? And he kind of described it as like feeling like 95% of him burned away. Like he had, he had nothing to say anymore or, or like that so much of what he was thinking and doing and saying and trying to present to other people was just bullshit. And, you know, is it worth it to burn, burn away 95% of yourself? And I think, yeah, you know, if the 5% left is, you know, something fundamental to yourself, then, then you should do it and kind of, um, you know, burn away this effigy and, and, you know, let this, you know, little sapling get some sunlight and actually grow into what it should be. Um, and so, you know, that made me, when people started asking me like, oh, hey, how are you? Like, I would just say like, oh, you know, I'm like depressed. And not like, I'll be like, oh, I'm so depressed, lol, or, or like, not make it a joke, not try and get sympathy or whatever, but just try to like state how I was feeling. Just try to, uh, yeah, try to just tell the truth, tell my truth more um, and just be more myself. Um, I think, yeah, that was like very important for me. Like the, the idea, you know, Jordan Peterson has another idea about like taking responsibility that like that is sort of um one of the the keys to happiness right if you responsibility gives you a reason to live at the very least um and you know i i was kind of super aimless at the time um so that idea was very compelling to me though even now uh, i'm still like pretty hesitant to take on responsibility I kind of like being able to do my own thing um but that thought I think also that you know incremental progress was another thing he talks a lot about like that you actually don't know the limit of human potential that um sort of the rewards of walking your path in life are so great that you actually can't possibly like conceive of them ahead of time um and that you know, you can only take steps from where you are. So, you know, it's about incremental progress and it's sort of about accepting where you are in life and just taking one step from there and then another step the next day and another step after that, you know, and eventually you've, you know, you sort of span this journey. Um, and when you start taking these steps, you also learn more about where you want to go you know you pick a goal you start walking towards it maybe you get there maybe you don't but at some point you realize like ah that's not quite it and then you pick a, a new goal and you kind of you're making progress that's not like linear progress but you know it, it's all adding up and and kind of helping you find the thing that you do actually want to be pursuing and like help you just end up there but also you know, still being open and like understanding that where you want to end up or like how you will end up is like so far out of your 
your understanding that like it could be so so great that like you know you, you need to like take small steps towards it but also not feel overwhelmed or like you have to have it all planned out like all at once i guess um yeah Is there any advice that you'd give your past self or someone that was in a similar situation? Um, good question. Advice is like so tricky, I think, because mm -hmm. I didn't, I really didn't want advice. Like I, I wanted to like do it all on my own or something or find my own way and in some sense, I guess I have, but some part of me thinks like if I just tried to go back in time and give myself the answers that like, I'll just be like, yeah, whatever, fuck off. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Um, but I think like in terms of careers, which was super important, like before I got the job that I have now, I basically didn't believe it was possible to work a job that didn't make me want to die every single day that I was alive working it. Um, which, you know, obviously you need to make money. And basically I couldn't imagine a way of making money that wasn't just like completely soul crushing or like, oh, I won the lottery. So now I'd never have to think about that ever again. And so I think like definitely something that would have benefited me more um, in my early life and even now today is just like better understanding how to make money and like all these different jobs that exist out there because, you know, you could be in computer science, but it's like there's just like, you know, infinite different types of, of computer science and tech jobs and like if you know like front-end developer and data scientist it's like well <laughs> there's like there's way more stuff out there you you could be doing and it's tricky because you don't you don't know what you don't know um and so you know part of that is like networking and just just researching trying to talk to more people and and yeah just find out more of what's actually going on out in the world um, that might inspire you. Um, yeah. What do you think was important to you about finding your own answers to the things you were working with? Um, I mean, it might be like a, a kind of like ODD thing, like oppositional defiance disorder. Like I kind of just didn't you know, growing up at school, it's like, oh, here's your homework. Like, here's like the main path you got to walk and like, you got to do these things to like, have a good life and, and blah, blah, blah. And like, it's just all so boring. It just seems so bullshit. And I just didn't really want to. Um, I think there are, you know, probably other reasons for, for feeling that way as well, but kind of, um, just ending up feeling like, you know, the main path sucked. And so I was just gonna like do my own thing on the side. Um, there's probably a lot of like arrogance and, and delusion growing up as a kid, like, oh, I'm gonna be a superstar and a, a rock star and like a gonna make this hit indie game and I'm gonna be like, professional soccer player and, and just like you know that I'm just gonna do everything and be the best at everything like it's just gonna work out for no reason um I think that's kind of how I I felt for a long time and and I think like yeah I really didn't want to just like follow some path that was already laid out for me I guess It's, I'm really struck by the contrast of how much, you know, school was difficult for you and you like skipped classes and didn't really resonate with that and, you know, like didn't pay attention in school and that sort of thing. And, and then at the same time, we're like, 
really studying things you cared about on your own and like watching lots of YouTube videos and learning lots of skills and, you know, getting really good at them, like demonstrably good at them. And I wonder how you think about that contrast, like what was so not compelling about school and so compelling about learning on your own? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think part of it is like the pace of things. Um, like, I think the reason video games are so addictive is because they, you know, they give you perfect instantaneous feedback, right? You either did it right or you did it wrong. And, you know, you're going to keep dying or you're going to be stuck at this point in the game until you learn how to overcome it. And when you do, then you get to progress to the next part. Um, and so in that sense, like video games are perfectly um, like scaled to your ability. Um, whereas in school, you know, if you're struggling with something, then it, the class moves on ahead without you. And if this is like so easy, you're like bored out of your skull doing this, like, well, you're still stuck there for another eight hours, like just pretending to take notes or something like I think that's very frustrating. And so learning things on your own, you know, you have the total total freedom um, to kind of learn at your own pace. And the pace and the curriculum itself, like the thing that you are learning. Um, excuse me, yeah. So like around 10 years old, yeah, I went to a summer camp called Computer Quest. And we just did, used a bunch of technology, um, like Lego Robotics and Macromedia Flash, which is now defunct. Uh, Adobe bought that as well, Adobe Flash. Um, just made some animations with that, some games with that. Uh, we used Game Maker there, which is um, how I got into making indie games. And that was a software that I was using for a very long time afterwards um, fl studio started learning how to produce music there and yeah like animation programming music production those are things that you know i would spend my whole weekend i would get home and just be excited to be like oh how do i like make this dubstep bass sound like how do i make a platformer um I think I'm I'm definitely more project and skill oriented. Um, like, it's like if you want to make a song, then there's just all these things you need to know in order to make that project. Like, to have like a tangible thing that you're working towards. Um, and a lot of school was definitely more like preparatory like or just like general knowledge and trivia and and like culture stuff you know which is like all important um but you know I started at some point in elementary school like I needed to know more about physics and like trigonometry to make the games that I wanted to make so it's like a very clear um, like I have a very clear reason for trying to learn this stuff. It's not just like, okay, here's some numbers. Here's, we're going to learn the equation of the line for who knows why you care about the equation of the line, but here it is, we're studying it. Um, I think, yeah, that's basically the, the big difference for me, like things that I care about as well as like having projects that sort of guide and inform the learning that I'm trying to do. You remember how you felt as a kid at that camp? Um, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> Such a good camp. And at lunch every day, we played fireball, hmm. which is like dodgeball, but it's every man for themselves. And we played in this big, like, um, grassy, like, valley. Um, and there would just be, like, I don't even know, 100 kids. And you just have there's like 30 like balls and just you know people are just whipping them everywhere you're dodging catching them like yeah I love that so much such a nice like it's a camp for nerds but it was great that we also got some physical activity at lunch too hmm. 
What do you think was different about that than school? Um, that's a good question too. You know, because we got recess and and stuff at school. Like we learn, um, we play. I think, yeah, I think it just comes down to the choice. Like I didn't choose to be in school. I didn't choose to be learning these things. And I had interests, you know, and I guess it feels like in retrospect, like had I known or if somebody could have just seen like, oh, this kid likes programming, like this kid is 10 and he already knows how to code or like he's 15 and he knows how to code or like he's 18 and he knows how to code. Like you should go this way and it's like here's how you can make money or, or achieve your dreams or something like that would have motivated me more but i think ultimately with school with um you know i think maybe people think about their lives more as like that project that they care about like oh I'm, i got this dream job i'm gonna go to this college i'm gonna get married and whatever and like people have more um broader life things and and they can maybe maybe they can like experience like okay well I don't want to grind for this test that feels useless but it's not useless actually because I'm gonna get a 90 on it and I'm not gonna get a scholarship and go to this good college or something like just that kind of stuff didn't matter to me um and so the reason why I was at school was just very just wasn't compelling for me and without a compelling reason um i i struggle uh, to do things very much do you remember what some of the first things were that you learned on youtube um yeah i think the early stuff was like origami magic tricks um some like soccer tricks freestyle soccer like how to do a rainbow or like how to do around the world um programming game development stuff sound design music production um i think i might have been interested in like hypnosis briefly um there's like animation stick figure animation uh, specifically, that's probably, that's a lot of it. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Do you remember how it came to pass that you worked on those games in college? Like, how did that come about that you were developing games and like sold them and that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think after I graduated high school, uh, in that summer, I used to frequent um, the Game Maker forums. And even as a young kid, there's like a, a beginner Q&A forum and people would post questions there. Sometimes I would post questions, but a lot of the time I was just answering questions that other people would post. Um, and... I remember on that forum seeing somebody just like very casually mention that you could make like $800 selling a flash game or like selling a license for um, a flash game to one of these big companies. And HTML5 had just started getting like widespread adoption, which is like the thing that replaced flash. Um, and Game Maker Studio had an HTML5 export. So this thing I was making games with could basically make Flash games. And um, I realized like I'd never, most of the thing, like I made hundreds of games, but finished like two of them. You know what I mean? So I was like, you know what? Let me make a game and let me finish it. And then let me try and sell it to one of these companies and maybe actually make money from this like wouldn't that be cool and so i gave myself a month basically for my first game um and i just remember like i was so 
adamant on finishing this game. It taught me a lot about project management and like scope creep. Basically, like you want to make this epic game, you have all these ideas, but actually just make a game, like make a bad game, make any game, like just finish it in this month. And, and yeah, like I think a week or two in, I realized I was making this whole open world game and I was like, I'm not, I can't finish this in a month. Scrap that idea, but kept, I had like a bunch of enemies and they shot bullets and stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to like take this concept and like super simplify it. So it became like this whole open world, like top down shooter game. And I just made it. There's just going to be six enemies in the whole game and you. And it's just a bullet hell game. So like the six bosses, basically one guy spawns in, just starts shooting out all these like, you know, patterns of bullets. And you're a little guy and you got to, you know, dance around all the bullets and, and shoot them. Um, and so you know, I got a new, new idea. And I was like, okay, I could definitely finish this in the remaining time. Um, you know, made the music for it, made the art, the animations, the game design, programming, just all myself. Um, and then, you know, month was up and I was like, okay, game's done. Pitched it to Armor Games first, I think. And yeah, ended up getting... I think like eight hundred dollars from like exactly what um, that post I had seen said, and it's not like an exclusive license either. So um, I like sold or like licensed that game to like a bunch of other um, games portals as well. Um, kind of over the span of like a year, maybe. But after you know licensing that one, I started working on another game, and I made two more both of them like kind of in a month or like two month uh time span and did that again yeah and that was going into um going into my first year of university um and yeah I was sort of successful at that I suppose like I, I was definitely not earning um a ton of money but for like an, an entrepreneurial little solo endeavor like eight thousand is a shitload of money um but i didn't really see a future doing that i guess um yeah and then i guess that that did also kind of sully my experience going into university or just like feeling like here i am making actual projects and it's like back into university like oh here I am doing pointless shit that doesn't matter and like isn't connected to anything that I care about really um yeah is there anything you felt you learned from the later two games like the first one you kind of got a sense of like scope creep and having to simplify do you remember learning anything from the later projects the later projects made me realize that <laughs> I'm like less creative than I thought. Um, one of the games was like very heavily inspired um, from this like super old um, JWAP game. He's like kind of he's in like Vlambeer now, um, sort of famous indie dev. Um, and the other one was like basically, uh, you know, maybe it's a ripoff of like this Wii tank, Wii play tank game. Or like you're like these wooden tanks and you bounce like bullets around. Um, it was basically this exact same gameplay mechanics, but I just kind of pumped up the the insanity on it a bit. But I realized, um, I think over the course of it, yeah, the creativity is a lot harder than I like would have previously given it credit for. It really you know, I reflected a lot of my music as well, too. It's like, ah, like, you know, a lot of this stuff is just very derivative. I'm not really doing um, much, like, novel or interesting stuff in my art. Like, I think I did just care a lot more about, about just how stuff works. Like, I really enjoy making tech demos and, like, just making something even if it is like exactly the same as something that already exists and it kind of made me realize like oh there are other people out there who just care a lot more about like creating something novel 
Um, and that was probably the first thing I realized or like one important thing I realized. And another thing is that it is kind of fucking foolhardy to try and make a game on your own. Like it makes way more sense to form a team because if you're doing the art and the audio and the design and the programming and the marketing and blah, 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 like that's just too many hats. Like you can't actually switch between those things effectively. You can't like become like truly skilled at all of those things. Like it just makes way more sense, you know, if you want to make games like focus on the game design and the programming maybe and hire an artist and you know license some songs for it like just outsource and 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 have a team i think stop being so needy for um everything to be within your control i think yeah let go of of some of the uh the there's like some word or some some phrase for it, but yeah, just learning how to not um, how to let other people like help help you. I guess I think it also you know talking about my mental health. Like, why didn't I let anyone help me? Like, I just wanted to do things on my own. It's important that it was like just me, but. Um, yeah you you can't get so far on your own like it turns out you do actually you can get much farther much quicker um, when you let other people help even if your exact vision of what it was supposed to be um might change because other people have good inputs um, and you know they're autonomous people kind of affecting the project in um, in their own ways yeah I'm sure you've needed to collaborate a lot for your work. Is there any collaborative projects you've done on your own? Like, have you designed any video games or made music or anything with anyone since then? Um, there were like maybe a university project where we had to make a game um, or there have been like a couple times I've tried, but um, no, not really. Um, it's never never like come to fruition um so i guess i'm still sort of trying to learn that lesson um or you know just waiting for the right inspiration or the right team or the right project or something do you have any sense of what that might be like a project you'd like to do or what kind of collaborators you'd like to work with mm. I mean, maybe some kind of game dev thing um, might be like content creation as well. Like uh, I was making TikToks for a while and I've kind of slowed down on that kind of trying to get back into them. But again, that was just like a very solo endeavor. And I think about like, well, if I had somebody filming me, there's like kind of moral support there. There's like energy there there's um you know more interesting shots even just having somebody follow you around with the camera is like way more interesting than the camera is being there on the ground filming you and like then if the ground if right now i just set my camera down and go do some stuff in front of it and then in the editing i'm basically like simulating rotating the camera by zooming in and, and cropping the shot to follow uh, what i'm doing on screen and so then it's like editing as well like if I just hired an editor, um, I can make more content faster and just do the actual stuff that I cared about. Um, and so I think like maybe some kind of yeah content creation or like multimedia sort of team uh, might be cool. Now you've been working on skateboarding recently. Uh, is there anything else that you've been learning? um skateboarding freestyle rapping i guess i've been doing that a bunch mm. that's been fun um 
skateboarding. Yeah, mostly just skateboarding, um, freestyling. I haven't really been doing too much else. I mean, I learn a lot of learning new stuff all the time on my job, basically. Um, but on my own, yeah, not too much. How do you decide what to learn? Like, how did you decide to start working on skateboarding or freestyle rap? Like, what motivates you to learn something? Hmm, that's a good question. Sometimes I'm not so sure myself. I mean, it's, um, it is, it's just a feeling. Um, growing up, it was just things that I would get obsessed with. And that would be the only thing I would want to think about, the only thing that I would want to do, just wherever I was. If I wasn't doing that thing, ultimately, I would just be thinking about it and just like waiting, just like idling in my head until I could be doing that thing again. Um, with skateboarding specifically, it's something that I kind of always thought was cool. Um, I tried it when I was 10 and it was like way too hard. I couldn't learn how to ollie. It's like, this shit is way harder than Tony Hawk he makes it look um, like the video games and <laughs> Tony Hawk himself. Um, and yeah, just recently, like two, two years ago, I guess I kind of was like, oh man, like it shucks. Like now I'm too old to learn how to skateboard. Like it would have been really cool to be able to do that. And then I was like, well, wait a minute, actually, like, I'm not too old, like, what the hell, like, and then I just went and bought a skateboard. Um, I think with skateboarding as well, yeah, I kind of, like, some part of it as well was just appreciating that, like, okay, I'm, I'm not playing team sports anymore, and, like, I hate jogging and shit, like, I just need some way to get more cardio and more, like, legs-based exercise. So that was like a big motivator for me uh, at this point in my life, like not just choosing it based off this like intrigue or, or passion or obsession, but also trying to factor in like this would be good for me mentally and physically as well. Um, and that, you know, you it's the fact that it is so deep, so technical, so difficult was like very horrifying and still is at um at moments like wow I'll just never ever be that good at this because it's just that difficult but on the other hand it's like there's always something to progress at and so you know that made it a very um seemed like a long-term reliable source of cardio for me um and so that made it seem worth sticking to as well um, I think, yeah, most of the things that I want to learn are like little skills or they're like creative or technical things. Um, yeah, solving a Rubik's cube, like doing origami, juggling, skateboarding, learning how to do flips or, or play sports or there, it's just a lot of programming music, um, I don't know exactly what it is, but some kind of technical, creative, athletic thing. Like a lot of those just really catch my eye, like yo-yoing, like any, you know what I mean? It's it's like, <laughs> there's just so many like little things that I could want to um, just understand how they work. You know, for a while I was drawing and, and painting um, and just better understanding. Like, I think a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, I want to draw this thing. But for me, it was like, I want to know how the fuck you make a, a 2D thing look like it's 3D. Like, how exactly is this illusion being constructed? Like, what are these artists up to? What do they know that I don't know? I need to, I need to know. <laughs> I need to, like, experience it for myself. Um, yeah. What has the sort of arc of your skateboarding learning journey so far been like? But part of this is um, also just this particular line of question is, you know, I think skateboarding is cool. And uh, also, 
uh, you know, there's a lot of things I'm trying to learn that already, like, I, I don't see myself trying to learn skateboarding. So I'm just like curious to learn what that's like. And uh, almost like live a little bit vicariously through like, damn, that's so cool that Sean's gotten so good at skateboarding. And yeah, just curious to learn more. Like, yeah, what have you learned so far? And where are you at now with that? Right. Um, so I guess like I had kind of learned to ollie and I landed like one kickflip like at some point in between when I was 10 and when I started learning two years ago. But that was just like super kind of fluky. I just been grinding for like two weeks in my backyard trying to do these tricks that like would have been a lot easier had I just learned how to roll around on my skateboard first i was really jumping the gun on that um and, you know landed one kickflip didn't step on a skateboard again for like five years or something um and then so yeah two years ago um i started learning how to just roll around on my board and that was super scary because you're out in public you can't really do it in your room there's like at least in my city there's not weren't really like good skate parks or like anywhere to learn like basically you just suck at skateboarding and you just go outside on your road and you start trying to push around you're falling over you're kicking your board you're like landing on your wrist weir and it's going like and then you go home <laughs> and you're like this shit sucks never doing this again i hate skateboarding and then the next day you're like ah. Eh nah I want to skateboard again <laughs> so you give it, a, give it a try um it's yeah it was a long time just like pushing around trying to learn how to ollie um ollieing is sort of like a beginner trick it's like the most fundamental trick that all the other ones are based off but the ollie was not invented for like the first 20 years of skateboarding or whatever you know like it's 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 a technical thing it's hard and um i mean it, it probably took me like a year and a half to kind of like really start to feel comfortable with it um and so at this point i can ollie um i can ollie over things too which is like different than just doing it stationary different than doing it while rolling so there's a timing element and you gotta make sure you actually get over it at the right time and, and it gets like more complex um yeah so i could ollie i could do um there's something called a shove it which is like you have your board and you rotate it while you're like skating on it you could do a backside shove it which is like rotating it this way or a front side shove it which is like rotating it that way um like you, you could pop that as well uh, you could do a kickflip where you pop and then flick and have it rotate like this way. Or you do a heel flip where you flick it out with your heel and have it rotate the other way. Um, you can manual where you are you just balance on your back wheel while you're rolling. Um, able to do that sometimes like ollie onto like a curb and manual across it and then you know pop off the other side there's like a little pad um, like elevated pad um yeah kick flip heel flip 180s so front side 180 where you 180 that way or back side 180 where you 180 that way um you know there's some there's just a whole bunch of little random little tricks and stuff i could do as well start learning how to power slide where it's kind of like you do like uh like while you're going you go and, and keep going so you kind of turn sideways to slash some speed um yeah i mean it feels like a lot but it also yeah at the same time there's just so much there's so many more tricks that are possible and i've only learned those in regular stances like there are actually four stances in skateboarding so you could do a kickflip, you could do a switch kickflip, you could do a fakey kickflip, and you can do a nollie kickflip. And so for every trick in skateboarding, there's actually four ways you could do that trick. And uh, just adding to the depth and like the possibility of, of mastery. Um, but yeah, it's been 
it's been two years, probably, I guess, over two years now. And um, I think just especially at the beginning, it's really grueling because you suck, you're hurting yourself, you can't do anything. There's like little fun about it in the beginning, to be honest. And I really had to just go for five minutes and, you know, fall over and be like, fuck this and go back in or 20 minutes and just push around or um, just practice something easy or practice something hard and, and really struggle with it and feel like I didn't make any progress, but just trusting that I would actually make progress eventually. Hmm. Hmm. What's your experience been recording TikTok videos about skateboarding? Um, yeah, that started early on. Um, well, not early on, I guess, like I kind of been skateboarding for a year and hadn't made too much progress, uh, or maybe it hadn't been a year, under a year, over a year, can't quite remember, but I've been skating for a bit before I started making TikToks, um, but when I really started trying to skate every day is when I started making TikToks, and those two things were like very synergistic, like making TikToks motivated me to skate and skating motivated or like getting content to make TikToks about. Um, so in that sense, like doing both felt like very easy or like easier than doing anyone on their own. Um, I remember hearing somebody say like content creation is just doing like 5% more work than you were already going to do. Like if you're going to do something like just record it or take some notes or then edit and upload it. And it's like, now you have content when before you would have had just done the thing. Um, and so kind of taking that idea to heart and just, you know, it's like, okay, today I'm trying to ollie up this curb. So let me put my camera on and just ollie up this curb a hundred times or like fail to ollie up this curb and see what happens. And then you know, maybe I get one and it's like, oh, that was my video. Like maybe I just fall, 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 get one. Yeah. Hooray. And it's like, edit that into a TikTok or I just have some really like goofy ass slam trying to ollie up this curve. And it's like, wow, I look ridiculous here. Like that's a great TikTok of me just like, like dying. Um, yeah. I mean, what else do you want to know? Hmm. Has it been fun for you making TikToks? It has been fun. Yeah. Um, it's been, I think it's fun too to just like express yourself more and to, um, like it's initially I wasn't talking in my TikToks. And at some point I just started talking and like narrating my videos a lot more. Um, and that's super fun. And also very like, cathartic and like you know I think a lot of people hate their voice hate the way they they sound and speak and like they're afraid of getting judged and and stuff like that so there's like also this whole kind of like emotional spiritual thing about like creating this content and putting it out there and um you know getting positive comments getting negative comments as well I think, you know, even going back to the games I made when I was 18, like the first game I made was mostly negative comments when I first got uploaded. And it was just a lot of kids like, this is the worst game. Like, you don't know how to make a game. This isn't like the Roblox game I play. It's like, okay, like, damn, like these kids hate me. <laughs> and like, it's like, yeah, how do I deal with that? And just, yeah, learning, learning to deal with that. Um, and it's like, this is my art and this is me. And those are separate things. And like people can, you know, criticize the things I make and I don't have to take that um, to heart. I can kind of separate myself from that. Um, and the, the response to my, my first game did actually become a lot more positive over time. I think when enough people realized it, it didn't suck and you know, they kind of enjoyed it more. Um, yeah. Hmm. Do you have a sense, like, I, I've asked about this recently, actually, on Twitter, but 
just like what is that like to not take something personally like if you're like someone's like oh man I hated your skate video you know like and you're like oh I can just not take that personally like what what are you doing internally when mm. that happens sometimes it's hard sometimes things hit you a certain way you get triggered and it's like well I'm triggered now <laughs> like, oh, like I can't stop thinking about this guy uh -huh. um and this thing you just said but um um how do you separate yourself from it I think there's there's something about needing validation I think a lot of the the art that I made the things I did earlier in my life were sort of about some part of me trying to get validated and so if um if you need people to like the content that you produce or create then you know maybe it feels great when they like it but it also is devastating when they don't and so part of the the detachments there like separation from you know um my art and myself was just being more comfortable not needing validation um allowing my art to kind of speak for itself i guess and um to kind of like make something with no expectations um to try and not control other people with my art because I think there's also something there that you know I'm still guilty of doing but it used to be all the time when I would like make a song and show it to someone and be like like well here's a song I made but like obviously the kick drum sounds like shit and like you know this lead sucks and you know the melody is like blah 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 and it's like why am I it's like I need you to like this song but I also need to tell you exactly how it sucks. And just being able to let go of both of those things, I guess, and just like, hey, here's a song I made. And then I listen to it. And then maybe they're like, wow, that was really fucking cringy. <laughs> like, I hated that. And it's like, ah, okay, nice. Or or they love it. And I, I think like just caring less, I guess, about whether or not people liked or disliked your art, um, I think is sort of some key there. But how to actually get there probably depends on the individual. How has making videos on TikTok been different than your experience posting on Twitter? Hmm. Um, I think the algorithm is a lot stronger on TikTok. So, I mean, maybe it's true on Twitter as well, but I think, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is kind of similar on Twitter. Like, if people are compelled to write something, then that video or that tweet will go viral. So, like, if somebody... I don't know, has like someone makes like a TikTok and they just like have a lazy eye or something, then you know people will comment being like, yo, did anyone else like see this guy's eye or whatever? Like if it just if something like makes somebody want to comment positive or negative, then like other people will want to comment as well. And it's just like then your whole comment section is like about this thing like one of my videos was just a super kind of shitty simple tutorial on how to throw down your board how to go from standing and holding your board you run throw down your board jump on it and now you're skating with speed um and in the video i said drag your tail on the ground right while you're and then throw it down and step on it and like so many of the comments were like, yo, don't drag your tail because when you do that, you'll scrape it away. And then when you go to Ollie and pop your tail off the ground, you'll have less pop. And basically from my perspective, that 
doesn't matter because your board won't last that long anyway. But um, I think from a lot of these kids' perspectives, like their board has to last them until Christmas, until their parents buy them another one. So like any damage their board is taking is like devastating. And they they need to like take hyper good care of it. Um, and so like that video kind of went viral, what like I don't know, like fifty thousand, hundred thousand views, whatever. And um, just because so many people were commenting like, "Yo, don't drag your tail," like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, it's bad. Blah, blah, blah. And then you know they're like counter commenters who would come in and be like these fucking losers you know care about their tail like huh, you know don't these guys know your board doesn't last that long or like dragging your tail doesn't do that much damage or you know people are like kind of making fun of me or trying to warn other people and then other people are like making fun of them and it just content can kind of turn into this whole like jungle this whole like ecosystem and it's like about the video but also like not about the video and i think you know that aspect of things is similar like on twitter on tiktok again like a sort of separation of of yourself from the content like sometimes that's very difficult but people are going to be talking about you or like you but it's like the character you made or like you acting in this art piece is you know so it, it's definitely not for everyone like a lot of people will just like have fucking breakdowns from this shit and like lose their mind like when people start when this happens you know to to something you've tweeted or, or anything really when you decide you want to learn something new now like how do you approach that is there anything that you make sure to do or ways that you're thinking about it like if you just picked up I don't know uh surfing today or something like I'm or something mm -hmm. that you've never done before like what would you be thinking about day one about how to start learning that new thing it's a good question um I think my tendency is to run before I can walk just dive in um see what happens because that informs your learning right like if you step on a surfboard and you realize like wow I cannot surf at all like maybe then it's like okay well what what do I need to actually like learn here and so maybe then there's like a research phase where it's like maybe you just start looking like beginner surfing tutorials or like surfing advice like and it's sort of like a broad um broad approach of like I'm just like casting a wide net I don't know what I'm looking for per se but I'm just like keeping my my eye open for some insight that I can take with me the next time I go practice this thing um because you know practice makes perfect but it's sort of perfect practice makes perfect or intentional practice makes improvement um you really need to it, it all comes down to the understanding like you know like with learning how to draw it's like drawing something wasn't important it's like how the fuck are these artists making this illusion like that's what's important and so like chipping away add that sort of like fog of war like so that you know like in an rts game right like the whole map is covered in fog of war and you got to explore this map to reveal it all and um that's like metaphorically how i would approach things i mean you can either explore the fog of war yourself and just you know scout out the entire map or you know, finding expertise from other people who can kind of like put little waypoints on your map or like reveal certain chunks of your map um, that you didn't know about ahead of time can be super, super helpful. So yeah, if I was going to learn how to surf, I would definitely get out there and try and surf. Um, and I would watch a lot of content or, or read or try and talk to people about surfing and see like what they had to say about it 
and then just always trying to have some intentional goal in mind of like progressing yourself a little bit at a time is there anything like that that you see yourself learning in the future or wanting to do surfing for sure yeah it looks so fun I've only done oh, it once. I um, mean, in general, just like anything that you want to learn, like maybe, maybe it's surfing, but you're like, oh yeah, like may, maybe right now I'm focusing on skateboarding, but like, uh, and freestyle rapping apparently, uh, but like anything yeah. that you're like, oh yeah, I could see myself doing that in the future. And I think there's going to be an arc where I want to do that. Mm. I mean, if there was a good opportunity to learn surfing, I would do that for sure. Mm. Um, off the top of my head, there's not really another thing um, yeah I can't think of anything exactly but you know it would be some sort of athletic creative like technical sort of thing um I would like to get better at painting actually um I've kind of long since wanted to get into woodworking a bit like turn things on lathes or make like cutting boards would be fun um would like to make knives <laughs> i think that would be super fun if i got to yeah just forge a little knife like on my own um or you know in my head i like get all the stuff and like do it on my own but realistically like if i could go to some sort of um blacksmith some guy who makes knives and and like get a a one-on-one -on -one kind of session and end up like making a knife um by the end of it i think that would be super cool hmm. are there any projects you'd like to do in the future where like you might need to level up at certain skills or gain new skills you're like oh i think this would be really cool to do like less a skill but more a project Hmm. I think in general, being more social, being more outgoing, or just still being less insecure or less like uh, embarrassed in public, I think, just more willing to to bring more energy um, when I'm outside and in public, I think would just make better content um and also would just make me a more fun person yeah. sorry i'm gonna try what is this one doing? a little better <clears throat> Do you have any dreams or goals or things that you see yourself doing in the future? Um, the sun is like so annoying to him. Um, dreams. I mean, I don't know. I feel in a way like particularly still like I don't exactly know what I'm doing or like I feel like a lot of other people have more long-term goals and I, I'm more of a a short-term guy or I, I still just mostly like doing whatever appeals to me in the moment. Um, I think I used to be very um, kind of avoided relationships uh, for most of my life, uh, like intimacy. And it's only been recently that you know even the possibility of like getting married or having kids went from like nah, like nah to like you know maybe um or you know just being open to that um so I don't know maybe going down a path like that but I kind of at least at this point in my life yeah I, I still love just learning new things and practicing and like I think there's just gonna be more things over the years that I'm just gonna get interested in and kind of play around with and then put down um come back to 
later. Um, I think like there's been a lot of things that I've done and most of them I have not come back to, but things like music, programming, some kind of athletics. Like I, I do like, I have come back to them. I can put them down and then pick them back up. Uh, and so there are certain things that like have had um, a lot more staying power. What's that like when you put something down and pick it up? Like what motivates you to put it down and what mot motivates you to pick it up? Boredom, probably. Uh, lack of novelty. I think... Yeah, like running on obsession for so much of my life, it's like either I'm bored or I'm obsessed with something. And some, uh, you know, at, at some day, like, you know, I've been obsessed with this thing for like two months and then I wake up and it's like, yeah, I never need to do this again. Hmm. Um, and then I just do something else because, you know, I can't feel the thing that I wanted to feel from that thing. Um, probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that like things have diminishing returns. Like when you're a total novice, like you can get twice as good as you are right now, like today, but tomorrow, you know, you can't get twice as good as that. And then the next day you can't get twice as good as that. Like, the initial improvement is like so fast and then it tapers off and sort of getting good enough at something to the point where you, you know that the rest of it is just consistency and hard work over a long period of time, like coming to that place where you're like, Oh, okay. Like, I really want to improve at this the way that like I feel like I want to you know I need to do this for like another five years and it's like yeah do I do I care that much though like no not really so let me find something else that I can improve at a lot very quickly um, and kind of have fun doing that learning something new what do you think about like as you hear yourself talk about this like what do you think about that uh, motivation system, like being motivated by obsession? Like, how does that feel to notice that that's what motivates you? Hmm. It is something, yeah, that I've thought a lot about. I mean, I think part of my hesitation with like romance in the past has been understanding that, you know, people can work that way as well and the thought of like being into somebody for two months and like putting everything into them and then waking up and going yeah I never need to see you again um like the idea of that felt so shitty I guess that like that's at least like one like hang up I had about doing that kind of thing um and so like it, it is scary, I think, committing to like a career, um, like programming and, and like design. Like I'm kind of do creative game development, like 3D sort of stuff at my job, but it is web development. It's not game design, um, which is like something that I've I've come back to enough times that it's like, OK, there's like staying power there for me. Um, but yeah, like committing to one thing has been, has always kind of been scary knowing that about myself. Cause it, there's just some fear of like, God, like what if I wake up one day and I don't want to do this shit anymore and I'm just stuck, like bored out of my fucking mind. Um, and so that's like one angle on it. And then I guess like with some of these like the games that i made um or getting into skateboarding um they're sort of like learning different strategies or like learning new ways of doing something like skateboarding um was really an effort of like trying not to burn myself out and trying not to like put everything into it and then 
be like, man, this is too hard, and then give up, or like, eh, I'm not improving so quick anymore, I'm giving up, or I'm bored, or something. Um, and so, like, with skateboarding, yeah, making a very deliberate effort to just practice, like, five to 20 minutes a day, just letting myself be okay with that, and um, trying not to feed into the obsession of it, but also trying to, um, like, protect myself from from the burnout or the the boredom of it as well. How how did you do that with skateboarding? Like approach that intention. Um, just yeah, just like after work, going out and skateboarding. It's like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just in, and I guess just allowing myself to do it for five or ten minutes, and if that's all I wanted to do that day, um just sort of intentionally not letting it consume everything, I guess, making that choice to be okay, just doing a little bit and then pursuing something else. So sort of working to, um, to build more moderation and, and variety and balance into my life. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about or dive more deeply into? Um, I would talk about <laughs> a lot of things. Um, no, nothing in particular. Great. Well, I really appreciate you answering my questions in such depth. And um, I think um, part of the reason I wanted to have this conversation is, you know, I think I've known you for probably two or three years on Twitter now. And like, I've just watched you learn a lot of stuff and like go really deeply into stuff and yeah, learn so many different things. And I really admire that. Like the, um, they're just like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. Like I'm waking up and I'm trying this and like, uh, seeing you learn so much about so many different things and curious about how you do that and how you think about that. And yeah, I just wanted to get to know you better. So thank you for, uh, speaking with me and having this conversation. Well, cool. thanks for having me. Yeah, I guess maybe if we could mm -hmm. keep going a little bit, I think sure. like the, yeah, like I guess I, I feel like I learned things partially or I have like because of a coat, because like I have been reclusive because I did just want to be on my own and like needed something to do. Um, I think you know, I've often wondered, like, what do people do with their time? Like, how how do other people spend their time? And I guess kind of realizing a lot of people spend a lot of time socializing or just, like, chilling or, or something. And mostly I wasn't doing that, you know. And, like, people have asked me how I've gotten good at so many things. And I think, like, the the answer that always came to mind is, like, I've never had a girlfriend. So it's like, you know, I just was not spending all this time and, and effort and money like pursuing these other things that I think people made that I feel have a more balanced life like we're actually doing. Um, I would just kind of feel lonely, I guess, and feel um, like I needed someone to distract myself from that. Um, and so I think like there is there definitely has been sort of like a, um, a darker side to all of this um, that, I don't know, part of it's like who I am and how I've been and like I am the person that I am today because of it. But I do also wonder like what if I felt better or something like earlier in my life, like maybe I wouldn't have done all of these things hmm. Hmm. what do you think about that yeah like i don't know <laughs> this feels like uh, i don't i don't know how to say this but like you are the judge of your own life and like how does it feel to have that question come up or what do you think about that 
Um, I think I'm probably fine with it, though. It certainly caused me a great deal of agony and definitely, um, I think, like, sort of avoiding relationships in particular has let me feel alienated a lot of my life and like I don't fit in and that I'm not like other people and that certainly persists to this day that's kind of like a feeling that I still carry around with me um and I think I've come to terms with that like a lot more that that I have in the past like actually um you know, I guess I just, I'm not, it's okay for me to, to be the way I am and like have the preferences that I have. Um, but also some of that was cope and like learning how to open my heart up to the world more, like has been, um, incredibly important as well. Um, so I think I'm happy with the way that I, I've lived my life um, and I'm excited to see where it's going at this point. Hmm. That's part of where the future oriented questions at the end came from, because I'm like, oh, man, Sean has done so many cool things and, you know, is really good at learning things. And I'm like, oh, I feel very confident that you can do some cool projects in the future with that, like just all of the skills that you've built and all the things that you know how to do. I'm like, oh, wonder what you're going to do with that. And yeah, not in the like pressury way, but but almost just like it feels inevitable. I'm like, oh, I like fast forward one, two, three, five years. Like, oh, Sean's going to have done some really cool shit. I like want to keep an eye on you and what you're up to. Word. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but maybe not. Maybe I just keep fiddling around with stuff like sort of that. Uh, someone on Twitter asked like, what happened to that? Like wacky inventor archetype of mm. person I, I think like i sort of am that person with with skills and learning stuff like i do just like fiddling and, and experimenting and kind of you know maybe nothing nothing big comes from it all in the end who's to say we'll find out <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i like big projects but also like i don't know if you made cutting boards and knives or something like that would be really cool that's not like like world transforming like you know this huge thing but i'm just like oh cool you you like finally learned how to make knives that's awesome or like maybe you do pick up i don't know surfing or like i don't know uh i don't know you i'm it just seems like um whatever you choose to do will be good so yeah can't go wrong yeah well, mm. well thanks again so much for speaking with, with me sean it was really lovely to get to know you better yeah thanks for having me Mm-hmm.